Hello everyone and welcome back to Weapon Ran and today we got Dungeons and Artifacts. And well, let's get right into it. So, Dungeons and Artifacts is about a main character named Stetch. Stetch is a main character with is an adventurer with navigation skills, which means that he can navigate through dungeons. Now, in this world there are dungeons which contain artifacts, and these artifacts is something that everybody wants due to their immense power and usability. And artifacts have two types, so they can be parasitic, which kind of latches on to a person or you need to drink it or it's like a one-time use thing. Or it's an item, which is like a sword, a bow, etc, etc. And basically, everyone kind of wants them. And Stetch is known for surviving these dungeons due to his amazing navigational skills. Therefore, um, a prince of the country that he's in asks him, asks him for help, hires him, in fact, in order to navigate through a dungeon in order to get a particular artifact. And he does just that. However, the prince betrays him, leaving him bleeding and about to die. However, then the dungeon collapses on itself, and the prince needs to leave without the artifact, which is in the form of a ring. And Stetch, in his desperation, manages to put it on. And that saves his life, because the ring is called Memento Motum, and it has some very, very special abilities. Those special abilities include... It can absorb monsters and skills. It can absorb cursed power from undead monsters. It it can uh, it really seriously just makes his combat ability above like insane. Like he's very 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 powerful, and can use enormous powerful magic without any kind of incantation. Moreover, it's basically Jarvis in Iron Man suit because it has a personality. It does analysis of fights. As it can be seen in this scene when he's fighting someone and he gives him some advice on who his enemy might be. And it, it also seems to have some kind of mysterious past that's not revealed. And now, since Steph, Steph has this amazing, amazing power, he decides that his end goal is to wreak revenge on the prince that betrayed him and the country that had failed him. And that's pretty much the premise of the story. And the and the story kind of continues, and he finds an elf village that is overrun by a dungeon, which he saves, and befriends an elf girl there, and becomes friends with her. This elf girl. This elf girl. And this is also, like, the most beloved character of the fandom. Actually, they're kind of... The fandom's a little bit weird, considering how much they obsess over this one elf character. But, you know, it's whatever. They're, she's cool, I guess. And she teams with this elf girl and goes on this adventure in order to gain power, gain more power, lose some more dungeons, and just, you know, finally uh, achieve his end goal of destroying the prince. And there's some uh, background lovely, and there's some lovely fight scenes, as you can see by these lovely parts that I've kind of outlined. They're very intense, very well paced. And the one thing that I do want to talk about is the lovely mythological backgrounds that it actually includes. Not that it takes inspiration from mythology, but rather it has some background mythology, a larger picture that's going on that they're giving little bits of foreshadowing and little bits of information to the readers. And that is really interesting because not only is there a general narrative of Stetch's revenge and gaining power going on, there's also a background narrative of some kind of struggle between good and evil that the main characters will probably later on be kind of sucked into and the readers can kind of anticipate that and that creates complexity. However, other than that, there's not really a big depth within the world building. There's The characters aren't very deep either and they're very one-dimensional. And the concept, although is cool, it isn't exactly original in any kind of manner. Dungeons and artifacts have been done over and over and over again in the anime and webtoon scene. And um, a talking utility that advises the main character like Jarvis isn't exactly new either. And I've been betrayed and I die, almost died, then I gain incredible power thing, yeah, also not very new. And because of that, I give this webtoon a B tier, because it's pretty good, it's, it's above average, however, it still does not break that barrier of becoming an A tier. Something that the other A tiers that has this is a decent, really good amount of world building and some character development. Something that Dungeons Artifacts have not shown. 
Obviously, if it becomes better, or if there's some large dramatic character development that feels natural to the narrative is uh, appears later in the series, then it might rank up. However, for now, it is a solid B tier. Would recommend it for people who are looking for a decent read, and that's about it. And like always, it was Webcrim Rand. Have a great day, everyone.